جو خولی تو دی بزنس مان 42 years old husband and father of a little boy name of your business is جو خولی انك you are also involved with um, currently Kolyi as a broker and vice president senior mm-hmm. your background you play very young at hockey from 6 7 years old and you became a pro at 20 on the NHL American League European League mm-hmm. what's that mean to you oh that's my uh, junior card my first year I was 16. So when you look at that, I saw uh, that smile. Yeah. What's the first memory? Uh, just, you know, arriving from, uh, I was a boy from Ashlaga Maisonneuve and going and arriving to Rimouski, a small town, with all my parents. It was quite a shock. How old Culture were you? Shock. 16 years old. I left when I was 15, got, yeah, 15 and a half, got there when I was 16. Really? Yeah. So, and your wildest dream when you were six or seven years old? You could not project yourself to be in Rimouski. Um, n- not really, because um, my family was um, immigrants. I was from an immigrant family, so nobody really played hockey in my family. Where? Uh, my dad's from Corsica, okay. so um, no one knew how to skate in my family. Um, I played because my neighbor was Mike Ribeiro, and... We got alone and we were best friends. So I started playing hockey. I started playing soccer first and then hockey. And then they went, uh, we got both drafted in juniors. I went to Rimouski, went to Rouen Aranda. And that what happened to your friendship when this happened? Uh, no, we stayed very close. Really? Yeah, throughout the years in juniors, like in summer, we'd train together. And juniors, he would go to his team, I'd go to my team. Uh, even when we both got drafted, he got drafted by the Canadian, I got drafted by the Kings. Uh, both of the mother were in the stands, you know, they were crying. Uh, when Mike got drafted, my mom was crying. When I got drafted, his mom, like, we were very close. Are you still a close friend today? Um, I'm, I'm godfather of his kids. Good. Uh, however, there's been some, I guess, uh, he has some We issues. are thinking differently. No, just uh, substantive. Substance issues that uh, he's taking care of himself now. So good. That friendship showed you right away what's a team player. Mm-hmm. Do you apply this in your life right now as an entrepreneur? Um, I think I applied from sports. It's mostly, you know, uh, yes, friendships, but uh, camaraderie, you know, discipline, um, objectives. Uh, going somewhere to do something together as a team and win. So I applied that to my business where my team and we'll have the same goals. We try not to have any passengers on the on the team. And um, if I win financially, everybody else wins financially as well. So I, I build the team in a way where we all want to succeed and we all um, – We all get something out of it, right? Whether it's financially or, or career-wise. Yes. Um, so, so we keep uh, we we. I'm trying to have the same goal for everyone. So that's the difficulty typically in business, where mm-hmm. uh, some people are nine to five and others are on commission, or 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 if you're the owner of the business, to all have the same goal. Um, but but through hockey and discipline, through all the different structure, I've think I put something together that looks similar. It teach you resilience. Yes, like that's for sure. That you had to have. Yeah. You're a big guy. Mm-hmm. And what was your position in the hockey? I was a defenseman. And when you did that and you got draft, what happened after that? Uh, well, when I got drafted when I was 17 by L.A. and I turned pro when I was 19, And that here we had uh, had won uh, Team Canada. We had won a medal and won the Mural Cup. After the Mural Cup, I left uh, for L.A. I trained with the team in L.A. Um, and that year, um, they sent me to the American League for one year. What hockey teach you? Discipline, resilience, you know, um, believing in yourself, believing in and teamwork of rather than just one person and uh, also, you know, doing what it takes to win. So 
At one point, you had to make a decision, and you made a big one to give it up yep. and pursue your life. You went back to school mm -hmm. and decide that you're going to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. on your own or with mm -hmm. somebody else. And how hard was it to make this decision and to believe that you could turn around and do something else? Um It wasn't that hard because I was always the. I didn't want to be that guy that plays because play hockey because he has to. I wanted to, if I didn't have the fire anymore, to stop to be able to stop financially even. Um, so when I stopped, um, I didn't want to take a year or two of doing nothing. So I went back to school right away. Um, so that also gave me energy by seeing younger people like i was the old guy in the, <laughs> and really of course i mean i went back to university when i was in my 30s right mm -hmm. so um it's it gave me energy to see the younger people and 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 to go through the uh, financial of doing finance and and the bachelor in real estate and all this stuff so uh it was it was a good it was not that hard but it was a lot of work because i was coming from so far behind you know like Just a calculator were different from my days. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, but it was fun, you know. Why did you choose real estate? Um, I, we already, I already had owned some real estate. Uh, my family was in real estate. Um, as a, an immigrant, uh, like my family always was like, okay, we have to buy, invest in real estate or land. And, and from a young age, I was exposed to it. And I thought it was also um, a culture where you have to compete with other entrepreneurs and and competing was part of my dna so i think it is yes still, <laughs> still to this day do you think your son has this uh i don't i mean i see that he's very athletic and and obviously uh my wife's six feet i'm six six three and a half so he's gonna be a big boy Um, but he likes to play more than competing, I think. And he's got more his mother's character for now. He's only seven, so we'll, he's a baby. Time, we'll yeah, tell, time will tell. But um, he's, he's a more uh, of a kid that enjoys than competes. Okay. So do you have a brother and sister? I have two sisters. Are they also entrepreneurs? Uh, one of them is um, uh, she's a forest firefighter wow. and also has her honey company don't she, she makes yeah. honeys yes so she is an entrepreneur in that way and my other one she's a vet uh veget veterinarian yeah um and she's looking to she's more of a brain and and wants to be in labs so and, you were born with entrepreneur yeah, yeah. inside of your family mm -hmm. it was not a question that you were not going to be entrepreneur mm -hmm. later on in your life but when you choose to go play hockey what was the family Uh, when you brought this up, how did they react? Um, well, I had to sort of make a deal with my parents that, you know, school was coming first, basically. Yes. That uh, my grades couldn't go down because of hockey. Uh, but it was also, uh, you know, I was first time leaving the house at 15 years old. You know, it was more difficult than I expected when I was that age because I was so close. We're a close family, you know, so. Today, you have a team of how many people? Uh, we're about uh, sitting here, six, seven, seven, eight people uh, in Toronto were the same. Um, so about 16 people, more or less. How do you deal with failure when a deal is not happening personally? Also, on your business side? How do you deal with it? Is it two different Joe or is it the same Joe? What do you do? Do you um, go in shopping? It's probably because you dress very well. <laughs> right. Or do you go out? Do you stay home? Do you reflect? Do you um, regroup? Typically, I, I, I try to understand why did I didn't get it and why did it fail and, and not repeat that mistake. Uh, and then I give myself one day to get it on my system Whether it's to go have a drinks and and or go out and buy some stuff and whatever and comes, then the next day it's back to business. But does it affect you? Because since you're such in a competition all the time with yourself, I see it by yourself mm -hmm. the way you train. Mm -hmm. You you're very focused on what you want. Mm -hmm. So is that make you feel like oh my god, 
I fail or it makes you push to go get bigger? It makes me push to get bigger. Yeah. Always? Right. Oh, yeah, always. I mean, you know, things happen, and, and if you can learn from them and, and push harder, and, and it's good. That's why I don't, I don't get mad. I, I don't, I'm not the type of guy that will bring down someone. I'm happy for them if they accomplish what they have to accomplish, but then I want to do better. Right, so that you don't get me. mad, but you get even. Yeah, by making it bigger. Yeah, what's big for you? Well, it depends on on deals. Size. Like I see here, well, all your trophy. Yeah, what's big? It's just the deal size, you know. Just you know, comp I'd like to when we pitch, we're we're three or four guys that always pitch for the same kind of stuff uh, through Quebec, and it's just nice to beat them, whether it's a small or a big deal. Just the fact that you beat them. Uh, it's good enough for me, but uh, there's no really, you know, big. You always look for a bigger deal, whether it's your last deal was, I don't know, like our, we have a deal right now that's about three hundred and ten million dollars. When I do this deal, the, am I going to look for a bigger? Yeah, I'd love to do a bit bigger, but it's part of the human nature, right? We're trying yes. to look for bigger, but we're just happy to do regular deal as well. Your business is really competition because you are an entrepreneur mm -hmm. in real estate and also commercial. And mm -hmm. sometimes also you take a little one on the more personal side. Mm -hmm. But do you sometimes feel that this is not big enough and I need bigger? And to get it bigger, you will crisscross work at a point where it's so overwhelming that you're like lost in what's going on? No, I, I, I think uh, we I do have an healthy healthy growth right now. Um, I do have coaches that's looking at my business and they tell me if you know I'm too lean in staff and and what are the solutions to keep growing organically. Do you believe in that? You need to. Yeah. You believe to go get help. Yeah, I, I have I have three coaches now. One Great. is sitting in the states. One is here in Quebec. Is And, and I have a third one that's just for overall to, overall lifestyle to. And they really help you. You saw a change, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's all because when you're so close to the project, then you get uh, distract. Uh, you get too close, and you just you don't see everything from a third eye that's from outside. Uh, they give you good guidance and and solutions, so. Um, I think it's, you know, if you're Michael Jordan, you had a coach. If you're Wayne Gretzky, you had a coach. So I believe that uh, what's different from being an entrepreneur and not have a coach, it just doesn't make sense to me. So, What's your biggest win up to today? That if you uh, had to say my biggest win. My biggest win is, is for sure my son. Oh. It's not, uh, it's something that... Uh, When he came out, since he came out, I didn't think I would ever have that kind of love for someone. And that's for sure my biggest one. And now it's fun because he's growing. So yeah. you can bring him out yes. more often. Correct. When yeah. they're small, they have to stay with mom. Yeah, yeah. To be a father, when you're an entrepreneur as yourself, you have to do social mm -hmm. outside all the time, mm -hmm. dinner, trips. You have mm -hmm. to travel. Mm -hmm. Does it affect your family life? Um, yes, I think. I think, you know, Um, I'm very lucky because the structure uh, that I have with with Kathy, my wife, um, it's it's she takes a she does, she takes a lot of what's going on at home, and um, she's a great mother. So she she takes care of schooling and, and taking care of, of Tyson's and 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 all the activity that comes with it. Um, on the other side, I you know I'm the provider of the family, so I have no choice but. Uh, but we, uh, but to work and, and do what I have to do for the family, my my part. Uh, but we also have our, our, our days where you know I'm not working and I'm coming home and. Of course, and, but uh, as an entrepreneur, I think we have to choose our partner very carefully, mm -hmm. and define what we expect from our partner because two people the same way. You imagine two Joe. No, that, that wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. <laughs> I mean, two Mia, yeah, it right. doesn't work. No. You need to have and understand. The basic of it. And the other one has to suffer also sometimes. Mm, yeah. And they have to understand. And they right. have to forgive you. And they have to go move on. Yeah, I mean, they're suffering. But, uh, you know, it's Suffer in a good way. Right. It's, 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 also, it's also the same thing for me. It's not because I don't want to be 
at, at my first, my son's first swimming, right? It's not, okay. or his first soccer game. It's just, I miss those, those event, but, you know, at the same time, someone has to provide. So, uh, and I'm very lucky that was understood and agreed before I got married. And uh, Kathy came from a, uh, also an immigrant family that he was an entrepreneur. So she's from a young age was exposed to this kind of structure. Um, so it made it easier that way. Um, but it's still time consuming for me. Right? But for both of you, you do sacrifice. Yes. And you have one dream. Yeah. What's your biggest dream today in 2023 that you want by Christmas? Um, I, I mean, I, f I, I set financial goals for each of my companies every year, uh, whether it's my lending company or my brokerage company or my holding company. Um, and, and then brokerage, you know, uh, set goals to finish in ranking, uh, not only number one in Quebec, but in Canada. So um, we're on a we're well positioned to finish there this year. So that's some of the goals that we're looking at. What makes you keep going every day when you see the economy is going mm -hmm. so bad, especially right now with the banks and everything? Mm -hmm. What pushes you to keep going every day? Because we know sometimes we're like, oof, we right. got a crash. Well, I mean, I, th I think my added value is to find solution, right? So um, there's no easy deal out there. And that's why I think the good brokers are going to still perform because you can find solutions to the obstacles. Uh, so that's the fun part of my job. Fun and bad at the same time. You know, obviously yeah. they're stressful. And uh, But again, it's, it's just uh, setting goals for the year, looking at goals for the quarters. I'm, I'm very goal-driven. But so. I want one. Just give me one to Christmas. Uh, what is it? So at Christmas, we're... We're what is your thing that you want? We're hoping to be number one in Quebec in brokerage and number one in Canada. So you will be. Why yeah. not? And then there's other, other big teams in Canada. Just switch them over. Yeah. It's just the different market. Vancouver is a bigger market. Toronto is a bigger market. So the deals are bigger than Quebec. But right now we're positioned to, we're well positioned to finish in the top, top two, top three. How do you choose who you're going to work with? as developer or whatever, because you, you have to be like in a marriage with them. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing to say, but business is a marriage. How do you choose who's going to go with you? Because you have three, four big guys around. Mm. And how do you know which one will go and fit with you and you're going in the same direction? How do you choose that here or in the States? Or is it uh, different? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, I, I, I have my go-to guys where, you know, uh, we've done based on past chemistry and past, past deals that we've done together. Um, I have other ones where, you know, chemistry is like we're on a friendship level as well. So, you know, like one of the group that came here to interview with you. Um, I also train at the gym with them. So we're, we're at this point friends. Um, so I, I, I just, at the point of my career, I just, I don't want headaches into partnerships. So if I think it's going to be a headache to work, then it's just not, you're not the right person for us to, to work together. Do they come and get you or are you going to them? Um, I'm fortunate enough now that I represent mostly products, so they come to me um, and I choose and pick who I work with. So that's, uh, that's now a, a perks of where I, I am in my career. Did it took you a long time to get there? Yes. How long? <laughs> Um, Not too long. You're well, 42. Yeah, well, you know, still, uh, it's because, look, a lot of the guys that I compete with, the three or four or five other guys that are in my bracket, they've been in the business for 25, 30 years, so I had to find ways to take their business away. Uh, I've been in business for 10 years here in, in Quebec, right? So um, I had to find a way to take their relationship away and to bring them to me. So, How I did you do it? I Tell worked, me the secret. Well, when I worked in New York, um, I worked for a mentor that was number one, the number one guy in New York, and he taught me the ropes. Um, What's his name? Is he still your mentor? Yeah, I mean we still share the same coach. So my what's, coach, what's, my what's coach. What's his name? Your mentor, uh, Bob Knackle. Okay. So um, Bob is, is is someone that even he's grossing over ten million dollars a year. Uh, uh, 
uh, in, in New York years after year and he's been in the business for over 30 years. So you can imagine that he's well off, uh, but he still comes early in the morning at 6 and, and, and you know, leaves at, at 10 and, and just a work ethic, you know. And when I came from New York to Quebec, you know, brokers are coming at 10, finishing at 4, you know, not Go working for on dream. Fridays. Too you know? sick. So I put a lot more hours than, than the guy next to me. And that, sure. how do you know where to go and pitch what you have to pitch? Because now we understand that a developer comes to mm-hmm. you or you go to them usually, but now they come to you. Mm-hmm. You accept the project and then what happened? So the way we find typically the projects or, or the, the asset classes according to the market, like uh, as an example, now we know that there is a, uh, there's not enough apartments in Quebec, yeah. there needs to be more apartments to be built. Um, so we're looking at areas where um, vacancy is low and, and that there is land to be redeveloped next to a train station or, or, Easy or metro, metro. So um, we're just got different strategy based on the demand of the market. And that's how we go and get the product. And then when we have the product, typically the, the developers are coming and see us. When you decide to go on a project full in, mm-hmm. your guy was have a lot of passion. I can see, like, let's go, mm-hmm. let's go. Is the passion goes down a little bit after, like, say, when you know you got it? Is the passion goes like, okay, time to move on? So, do so, you stay on the high all the time? No, I mean, for me, it's really to get the get get the mandate and sell it when it's sold. You know, some of the guys, some of the of the vendors, they're like, oh, you must be excited about the commission. I was like, I'm, I'm already moved on at that point to to the next. I guess I'm more of a deal junkie than 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 what comes out of it. Yeah, it's, the money is nice, but it's just yeah, it it's just for for me at that point when I know I've done my job, I'm moving on and I'm looking for the next deal. Are you a work addict? Yeah. You yeah. are. Yeah. Describe to me a day. Uh, Monday morning. So the alarm goes off at what time? Uh, around four, four fifteen. No alarm. I wake up on my own. Okay. Um, I usually have some coffees. Um, I'll answer a few emails, uh, and then I'll go to the gym. I'll meet um, the trainers around probably six forty-five. Um, then I train. I come back. I'll have breakfast with my family. Then I go to the office. I probably at the office around nine. 9.30, then we, I have my team's meeting at 10.10, 10, um, and then I go on my day, either it's meetings or, or calls or Zooms or stuff like this, and, and I'll probably finish. If I don't have to entertain that night like for dinners and stuff, I'll probably finish around uh, probably 9 o'clock. Uh, if I do have to entertain, I'll probably finish around 12, um, and that's like that uh, until... Uh, Friday, Saturday, I keep off completely. I'll have a dinner with uh, with uh, Kathy, um, and then Sunday with my son and brunch, and and then we uh, we eat. Then I go back to work around three o'clock on afternoon. Sunday. Yes, I have to get the week ready. So, so typically, I go at three o'clock, and but I'll come back for dinner. The hockey part of your life made your team so wonderful today. Mm-hmm. What is it that you want to accomplish more in the next year coming up? Um, personally and as an entrepreneur, what do you want to add to your list? I think personally I want to find a, a, a better balance in health and, and training and and. And business. Can we know. do that when you're bigger? Uh, I don't know. If you find the secret, please send it this <laughs> That's way. That's the goal, right? Okay, just send it this way. Maybe a little bit more sleep or, 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 you know. So, and on the business side, like I want the team to to grow to the objective and I want the, my teammates to uh, accomplish their goals. So that's... Let's say a teammate comes into your office at 10, 10 in the meeting in mm-hmm. the morning and say to you, Joe... I can't. I don't know what I want to do. I'm giving up. This is not for me. Mm-hmm. Please help me. What do you do? Do you take the time and yeah. put yourself lower 
to push them higher so you know you secure the whole team? Or you will say, let's see a coach? How do you handle this position? Well, typically I'll, I'll ask, uh, what is it? Is it financially? Is it, is it the time? Is it the amount of work? Is it the pressure? And I'll act accordingly. You know, some, this business is very high volume, high pressure. Uh, we, we work with a lot of uh, high-end network high people with their private money. So it comes with the package, the attitude, uh, you know. Uh, so it depends on what is the trigger. And if it's a trigger that we can fix, we'll fix it. If it's a trigger that we can't fix, then um, I'm very quick, uh, I'm very slow on hiring. So I hire the right person. But I'm, so I I'm, represent you. And, but I'm very quick on firing. Uh, oh. Right. I don't, I've done the mistakes in the past where I hold on to someone knowing that she's not the right person or it's not the right person. And I, it's, it's ending up every time that I get frustrated, that person gets frustrated, and then there's a bad breakup at the end. Now, if I know, if I feel right away, it's, it's not the right person, I just let it go right away. Because if not, it will drag on your energy, yeah. your time. Yeah. And the pressure will come on. Yeah. How do you handle stress and pressure at work? Because you do have. I mean, mm -hmm. I, mean I, I. You love it. I, yeah, I think that's what makes me thrive. You know, the pressure. I think it's what makes me get up every day. Like if it was boring, I wouldn't want to go. I get bored pretty quick. I have ADD. So if it's not pressure, if it's not something that needs my attention. Do you need a circus right now? Because we can create one. Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, For another okay. five minutes, we keep going? Yeah, okay. You're okay? Yeah. So, <laughs> because admitting that you have a deficit of attention right. can be very stressful on your team as well right. and your family as well because mm -hmm. we never know when you're going to get up and go. Right. Um, but it has a quality to it. You don't wait on making decisions. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest decision you had to make and you made and you regret it today? Oh, and business. I, do, I mean, typically I don't regret decision because I learned from if it's not turning the way I want it. Um, I don't really have any decision that I regret uh, so do you, far. Do you agree that failure, it's a way to push you to get bigger? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if, when, when you experience failure um, and then you analyze why, then you do, you, you take the proper decision and and not to make it to not to fail again for this reason and then you move on so typically you grow from failure right i feel that when you're an entrepreneur you you are quickly high mm -hmm. but it's to keep it there yeah how do you keep it there by hiring coaching uh you know i'm i'm trying to also i take courses every year um whether it's uh courses just to um polish me or or things to make me better I, like I think you know taking courses and, and make yourself better uh, so your net added value it's mm -hmm. it's helping you a lot having a coach telling you a right coach telling you where are you weaker where are you stronger and what you need to work on is also very important so but you're not very flexible so how do we do that how I'm do they, flexible with not the, breaking uh, you but how do you, It has to be somebody you, you trust. Yeah. So I'm flexible with the people I trust. Okay. Um, and and my coaches or I hand them, pick them. I, I worked with a bunch of coach that didn't last very long. And the coach I have now are, are long-term coaches. So when they tell me something, I, I really consider it. How do you build and keep your relationship with your business partner? Or your client? How do you do that? Because you have a way. Huh? You're yeah. very quiet. You come yeah. in. We're not too sure. I know you're a little bit more than outside mm -hmm. of here. You're a guy who's a, a strong personality. Mm -hmm. And you're a big guy. And you know what you want. Mm -hmm. But you don't look like you're just sure of yourself with a big smile. Mm -hmm. It's a quality. But right. how do you build behind this? You know, once you sit with them and they're about to give you, I see anything millions and mm -hmm. billions of dollars to design mm -hmm. on that day you're not sure no but i think i think uh it's it's 
How do you build that confidence the, the, to keep that? The trust uh, of a relationship is, is based like everything. Like I was saying, most of my clients, all my top clients are friends at this point. Mm -hmm. So we are in a friendship where we can tell each other the truth, where if I'm not happy or they're not happy, it's not going to affect the relationship. It shouldn't. So, so by, by that, we can adjust and, and try to get to the goals. Mm -hmm. Um, as long as, uh, it, like again, it's as long as we all know that I want the good, the best for them, and they want the best for me. Well, obviously. So that's that's the way. That's why I I choose and pick who I work with, and and. Are you and, picky? Yeah. yeah. You are. I, yeah. No, I, I I like I I can't work with someone that I don't trust. You know, so even though they could be millions of dollars at the end of the project, it's just not something I'd rather not go in if I don't feel it. What breaks your trust in business? How do you know? When you hide stuff from the other person or, or for your advantage or or when you put yourself before the project for your gain, that's... And the truth always come out. Yeah. yeah. And construction is very, very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> It's a big business. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we see side that is not always pleasant. Mm -hmm. And do you think in that field, it's mostly men? Mm -hmm. What happens when women comes in? Um, I, I've seen some women that are very capable and very good at, at what we do. Um, I think women at this point, because of uh, in the private investment it's it's a little harder because it's man's mostly i would say 99 men's that succeed it's more of a boys club why do you think that we're in 2023 because it's it's been like that forever you know there's not been that many changes in that in that field what would make that change uh, i think we're slowly seeing it in, in corporate world where you know bigger company have a female president or female construction head and stuff like this. So I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, it's just like anything else, right? The, like most of these owners own construction companies. There's not that many girls in construction. So it just triggered downs, right? So they didn't, never dealt with a uh, female in that field. Mm -hmm. So, but I think we're seeing more and more. It's just a matter of time before it's... There, there is more female in our circle. Do you like to do business more in the States or in Canada? It's different in a way where uh, in the States, um, there is um, less tire kickers. Um, there's a lot of businessmen, a lot more money, first of all, a lot more yeah. businessmen. So especially when I was in New York, you know, the people that comes at the table for a project, they have to commit to some money already that was not ref refundable from the get-go. Um, Why is before. it refundable here? If you're here, you can make offers with deposit refundable if you're not satisfied with your inspection period. In New York, as you make your inspection ahead, you put your 10% down. If you're not happy, then you lose that 10%, right? So, really? Yeah. So it's harder. It's yeah. plays harder. It's more expensive. It's harder, but there's more... There's more. There's more money, right? So if 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 it's not going to work for you, this is going to work for the one someone else in the back, right? So. Do you think it has more risks to do business in the states or do here in Canada? I think that there is certainty in deals. There's more certainty in deals right at the beginning in the states versus Canada, because here the deposits are refundable, so you can afford to go in a deal not knowing if you're going to buy it or not. But if you're buying a $100 million dollar project and you put $10 million as a deposit that's not refundable, you gotta think yeah, there's, twice. Good, yeah, there's a good chance that you're going to close on it, right? You don't want to lose that money. So no. that's the difference. Knowing that, and you go in both, mm -hmm. I think you travel mm -hmm. also in the States. You work in the States. You mm -hmm. work here. Why not living in the States? You could. Yeah, I mean, I came back um, um, for my family's business. Yes. Um, but I also enjoy uh, Montreal. I, I mean, my family enjoys Montreal. Uh, my wife, she's from St. Agathe. Um, so she came back here and she wanted to be here and she wanted to live here. So that's what we, we did. Um, 
and it doesn't mean in the future we won't be in the States, but for now, uh, you know, my son is in school. Uh, um, we have a good life. Everything is smooth. Smooth and no, no and Sally, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let it go like this. Exactly. You go also in Ontario. Mm -hmm. I interview some of your friends also mm -hmm. on this show. And the difference is quite there for mm -hmm. them. Is it the same for you? In Ontario, they see it's different than Quebec. The mm -hmm. laws are different. The the way they do business is different. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it's different? It is. There's different uh, bylaws for zoning and all the stuff in, in Ontario. So um, that's why I have a partner in Toronto uh, that knows and understands the business a little better than me there. Um, but at the end of the day, it's real estate, right? So... There's there's a few different things, just like for uh, someone from Ontario that comes here in Quebec. They have to adjust to other things. So it's just adjustment. And, and once you do them, then you're fine. To which expense would you go for success in your career? I mean, to which expense? Mm -hmm. How far are you, because you're a competitor. Yeah. How far are you ready to go for success? What would you do? Whatever it needs to be done. Uh, whether it's, you know, like we just spent two days uh, at the office uh, re 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 reworking the numbers and I have maybe an hour of sleep uh, and then I had to pitch t today. So um, most brokers won't go that far. That's why you, know? you win. Yeah. So the risk will be very extended. Let's say we have to gamble everything you own to get that deal. You have to put it in color. If I didn't have a family, I would do it. You would? Yeah. You're that kind of guy? Yeah. And you yeah. would not be scared to start all over? No. Okay. no. Kathy needs to stay by yeah. your side. <laughs> yeah. So she can keep I've you down. I've done my share of risk uh, with Kathy. And and she was uncomfortable. And, and we It's ended scary. Up, we ended up, you know, just like the lending business is a scary business. Yes. Um, but now we're at the point where... What I gained for them, I wouldn't want to lose, right? If it was just me, it wouldn't matter. Do you ask around to your wife or your, the person you ask if you have to, a big thing to do or you just do it and then she figure out by the uh, way you behave that you're not, you, something is going no, on? No, I usually tell her. She knows that I'm going to be a certain, a certain way at home. So I read her, say, look, well, this is what's going on and that's the reason why I might be different. Different in the next few days because I'm a little under the pressure. Um, but no, I rather tell her. It's just, it's just that before um, I would have took the risk regardless if she was comfortable or not with it, because mm -hmm. I was comfortable, mm -hmm. and it paid off for us. Um, but at this point, as my son is seven years old and they live a comfortable life, so I don't think I would risk all this. And if she for, say no to something you really want. Um, Don't worry, everybody got the same question. Right. What, what happened to your partner? If you say no and you really want it and it's going to happen and you disclose and she say, I'm sorry, this is not comfortable for me, drop the deal. I would probably still do it. You are. Yeah. They all answer the same, so don't worry. <laughs> all right. to all, even me. Right. If you ask my husband, I still yeah. do it. Yeah. We just don't tell them. Right. We get scared. Yeah. And I think the scare part is because we scare ourselves. Yeah. And yeah, if no, you scare sure. yourself, no. you feel power. Right. Do you feel that you're in power when you're really scared and yeah. the adrenaline's you going? You feel alive, right? Feel what, like, what, yeah. what, what is this? Is it a disease or is it... Because some it's, of them, they can't. If you ask my right, partner, right. you would never do what I do. Right. If you ask your partner, yeah. I'm sure she would say, are you crazy? I'm no, comfortable. No, for sure. They, uh, it's, 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 it's not for everyone, right, to start at zero every year and not having a paycheck to come in, right? So it's, it's just Do you get what scared drives me. Sometimes huh? that you're not going to make I just get scared all the time. <laughs> all the time. Really? What if I go broke? What if it's, 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 it's in my gut? And that's why I perform. Right. Whether I have ten, thirty million dollars at the bank, I still feel broke. You do. Yeah. So me and you have the same disease. Yeah. So you think you're not gonna make it to tomorrow, yeah. everything's gonna be gone. Yeah. But you wouldn't be scared to start all over. No. You see how something's yeah. wrong with us. Yeah. We, we need <laughs> yeah. more than coach, we need therapy. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So every entrepreneur I I, I spoke with, 
It, they all say we like to be scared. Mm -hmm. We all think we're going to be broke. We yeah. see ourselves broke, yeah. but we're ready to start and do another deal because yeah. we could stop. You could stop tomorrow yeah. and say, I don't work anymore. Right. I just play golf all day. Right. Why do you don't do it? I would be bored. It's, it's, uh, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't How be. How much can to... you shop? Right. And, 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 and it, it, there's no excitement at this point, right? What do you do? You're irrelevant. You're just going and play golf every day. I mean, it's not, it's just not for me. If a brand new, broker, entre entrepreneur comes to you and say, Joe, I want to have what you have. Mm -hmm. Please help me to start on my own. Would you help? Yeah. What would you tell him to do? Well, first, he would have to uh, understand finance. So You sent him to school? Yeah, I would make sure they understand finance. They had a degree in finance. And, and second, just discipline. You know, uh, you, in this business, you put out what you put in. Um, if you think you want to go play hockey at five, at six o'clock during the week, and you want to have dinner with your girlfriend and weekend, I'm like, you're in the wrong business. So. Okay. And you will mentor someone? Mm -hmm. Did you do it before? I've done some of it, yes. I've done, uh, I've done some of it, but... Um, they didn't have it in them? No. No, again, it's just, it's just you know... They tell you, yes, Joe, I'm going to work 15 hours a day, no problem, I don't know. And then when it comes down to do it, it's a different story, right? So, um, you know, sometimes you think you're capable to do some things until you start doing it. And then you realize, well, it's not for you. And that's what happened on a few things, you know. The biggest deal you had up to today, it's what I want. Because uh, I see number here, right. but I'm we, sure we you We saw did. our biggest deal was... Uh, was uh, two years ago we did uh, the biggest transaction in multi-residential in Quebec history, which was 2,400 units, apartment building. We sold uh, We sold this for, uh, by memory, like close to $400 million. How did you feel? It was gone, uh, but done and gone uh, by the, the time the, you got there? Uh, or? But the, the, the more... Uh, Special thing about this this deal is as we did it on sixty days, uh, and and it was in December. The closing was in December, uh, fifteen, I believe. So to find a notary and and do all this work within sixty days was pretty crazy. And and uh, you know, obviously you're you get proud of it and you did the deal, but then you move on to something else. You know? Is this was your biggest deal? Yeah. Did you celebrate? Did you at least took a moment and say, wow, or you move on right away? So so my partner at the time took two months off. And you took two minutes? I took, I didn't, I, I, when I came still in the on. next day. I came in the next day, I hired press conference, I, I hired public and, and, and launched it to the public when we closed it. So I didn't take any break for it. You, think, was, you think success changed who you are today? No, no, I mean... Whether if it was in hockey or in 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 real estate or in business, I think I think you know that doesn't define me. Uh, the money that I do that I have or or the work that I do doesn't define me as a person. So that's why I didn't have a, a big you know, especially in hockey when um, people stop playing, they lose their identity because they went from being. A this superstar. guy on this team and a name and uh, a number to wow i'm home in timbuktu doing nothing right they get in a depression because the stardom yeah. is so big right so getting it you know they lose the attention of the public and uh, and they don't do anything meaningful sometimes or they don't they, they take times off and i think it catch them up so for me it was never a uh, part of my identity i was me whether whether i was I'm the same person with or without, you know, so. I'm so success didn't change you, money didn't really. change you. No, not but really. But you have nicer things, you yeah, I mean, see bigger. I mean, that's that's one thing I was I was telling uh, Kathy yesterday. It's like we used to go for fries and wine. And we're know, happy. We were happy. And now today we are going to lunch at Milos in the Porsche and, and you have a Christian view and buy and this and that. It's like we made a, a significant amount of roads in 10 years but we're the same two people right so which that's what i like 
Would you be able to go back with your wife to wine and French fry? Yeah. You would? Yeah, of course. Do you go back to the where you were sometime and say to yourself as an entrepreneur, okay, now I'm losing it. I need to go back to the board and like sit down and rewrite what I want to go yeah. to achieve or you keep building and you forget the past? No, no, I, I it's it's a thing that I call live in the gain or the gap. Okay. Right? It's similar. If you live in the gain, it's on you what you gain. Uh, and, and, and if you live in the gap, it's what you're missing, right? So we, I redo all our goals and, and everything every quarter of mm -hmm. this and for the year and every quarter. And I set uh, goals on a weekly basis as well for that week. So I s stay within uh, goal rotation. So it doesn't, it doesn't change my way of doing things. And, and every, typically at, at, from the start of the year to Christmas, at Christmas we get time off for the market to slow down. So I sit down and I look what didn't work, what worked, didn't work, and what we're changing for the second half of the year. How do you balance your work? life in your life because you say a little bit you have to sacrifice earlier mm -hmm. and it's difficult sometimes you miss a lot of things but at one point you have to balance it like you take saturday off you go out for yeah. dinner sundays yeah. with the kids and but you have a routine right you're a routine guy or you're more on the go let's go because well, uh, you're really hard to catch sometimes right. you look like you're all like you say but right. sometimes because your business is going up yeah. and down how do you manage the work in life well i don't really i don't do very well with this it's okay <laughs> we all have it's, have it's uh, one part of of that i hope one day i'm better at uh, uh, but you know for me um but do you really do we really want to be better uh, no because we like passion right no you're right it's just it's just that it's it's a good idea it, it looks good on paper it just might not applicable to life right but um No matter what Saturday uh, I'm keeping for for Kathy, and, and no matter what Sunday morning I'm keeping for my son. So at least those are two areas where I'm not going to budge on this. What's the definition of success for Joe Hulier? Um, oh. I, I'm hoping that when I'm not in this part, of when I'm gone, that... that gone where? When I'm not part of this world anymore, that, okay. that, that it, my I won't son, be here. You, nobody is yeah, going to know. So that my uh, my son will have learned the value of a dollar and will do bigger things that I've done. So that's wow. what be success for me. Yeah, that's a big challenge for your right. son. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he won't take that challenge. What about no. if he's not? like you and he doesn't want challenge and just that, that's also fine I wanted to be in a position where if he wants to be an artist he can be an artist without starving mm -hmm. right so would you support him yeah of course you would yeah 100% do you want more children yes oh yeah. girl I'd like to have a little girl. Come there. on. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, you have to give us a girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if she's pretty as much as your wife would be okay yeah <laughs> in your life a moment in your life. Did you decide, I have enough? This is too much. We all have this as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. One moment we say, okay, I can't. I'm going to go work in a car dealership mm -hmm. for five seconds and sell Porsche. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have that moment. Mm -hmm. This ever happened since you left talking? Yeah. I mean, uh, it happens every year where I'm like, okay, I'm moving to an island and I'm being a fisherman. <laughs> you know? Really? Yeah. Like it's just and then, but then you know it's just an, an ideal because at that time I'm tired and and I'm, I'm overworked and and but then as soon as I rest a little bit it goes away right so uh, it's just part of of you always want what you don't have in life I guess but uh, I know that I'd be there for two days and I would want to come back you know it's just on vacation it's like everybody's like why don't Joe why don't you take vacation more vacation I'm like what well, on the first two days it's fun then after I'm just thinking about my business and I'm like <laughs> yeah 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 go swim uh, yeah. yeah I'm gonna so, be here by the chair you have Wi-Fi so, <laughs> yeah exactly so when I take vacation it's more for the family than for me right so you do yeah where do you see yourself in five years hmm I'm I'm hoping that my business would manage himself a little better, and I'll be able to to uh, at least the family will be able to be six months in Florida, six months here. Are you a perfectionist? A little bit, yes. A little bit. Yeah. 
So if you are a perfectionist, well, I think it's a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. I love being perfectionist. Mm -hmm. You know that. Mm -hmm. Perfectionist is never happy with what the outside for yourself. First of all, we feel guilty for mm -hmm. everything, but for a team. Mm -hmm. So when you say when it's more balanced and it goes better, but when is that? What what they have to prove to you to take that six months and that six months? I don't know. I mean, I still micromanage pretty much everything. Which, you do? Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a learning process. My coach are telling me that I need to give the work and, and focus on, on what I do best and only what I do best. But it's it's hard when it's your baby, right? So, yeah. Because you felt it's your name. Yeah. Yeah. Not and, theirs. Exactly. They gotta find a new job. Plus, plus, you know, when when it's your business, you'll do whatever it takes to make it work. Mm -hmm. If it's someone else's business, I feel like yeah. It's you true. Know? It's so, not their business. Yeah. They come for the paycheck because yeah. they like you. But if it doesn't go their way, and it's hard these days because I think our team is a reflection of us, mm -hmm. but without the passion. Right. I'm going to ask you three words. I want you to put them in order that you believe it's good. Success, passion, money. Which one comes first and second and third? Success? Uh, passion, what? success, money. You think like me. Yeah. I do. I think like that too. Mm. I think if you have passion, you will always drive in. Mm -hmm. The success will come and then the money, you yeah. don't really care. Right. It's hard to say. And I know for people who listen mm -hmm. to us, they will say, who are these two people? Right. But it's true. Right. The money comes in and you already moved on like right. you experienced before. Right. At 60 years old, Joe, do you think you will stop working? No. No, <laughs> that's for sure not. Where is the place you will live, though? Um, it, It's really like I... I don't enjoy the winter here, so mm, nobody maybe <laughs> nobody. Uh, we love Quebec. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, somewhere where I can, I can still work and and do my business. Then I'm not too far, a flight away, not too far. Uh, but somewhere warm in the winter for sure. Would you go to Europe? Yeah, I mean, I like Europe. It's just it's it's the flight that's a little long. I want to be closer than that too. If there's issues with. With something to do, like, like you know. But at that age, you will learn by your coach that you have to yeah. let go. Yeah. I want to thank you. Thank you. I really liked talking with you. And please keep pushing. Yeah, same for me. Thank, thank you for you. having me. Thanks. Thank you.